Now in today's video, we're going to be taking you over our Linux gaming PC. For those of you that remember this system, you will also notice that it looks a little bit different. And that's because we've been doing some changes on it. And it's been an absolute nightmare to build. So let's dive into that and I'll show you what I mean. For those of you that don't remember, we were actually building ourselves a nice little Linux gaming PC for the studio. And we always had the intention that we were going to build it for Steam OS. We actually put the system together in this beautiful Wizmax woofer case using a bunch of janky parts that I found from old PCs and things around the studio and the system worked beautifully fine. Now of course Steam OS is not officially supported so instead of using it we actually installed Ubuntu with Steam on it and got everything working perfectly fine but of course a lot of you out there told me that you can actually just install the Steam Deck version on a system. Unfortunately our previous system wouldn't actually do that and the reason for that is or the major reason for that at the time was because Steam OS, the Steam Deck version, requires an NVMe drive. And we didn't have one on the old motherboard. It was a very old A320 with a Ryzen 5 3600 and RX 6600, 16 gigabytes of RAM, but it used a SATA hard drive or SATA SSD to be able to use for storage. And unfortunately that just would not work with the ISO. So we decided we had to do some upgrades and it was an absolute nightmare to get this system working. To be able to resolve the lack of NVMe drive on this system, of course we needed a new motherboard so i went straight over to amazon purchased a new board which are not that cheap anymore particularly for am4 boards and i managed to pick up this one here it is the gigabyte aorus b550m elite i've actually had elite motherboards in the past from aorus and they've been perfectly fine this one comes with two nvme slots four ddr slots which were all different to the previous system and it cost a silly amount of money to be honest but i definitely wanted to get the system up and running one bonus to it in particular was the fact that the motherboard is much wider than the one that we had before so we do fill out the case better which is definitely something that we wanted to do from the previous one so we were all good to go with a brand new motherboard the second issue though which actually caused us a lot of pain was the fact that this motherboard just simply would not work with the ryzen 5 3600 it worked with every other ryzen processor that i had in the studio even older ones that were not officially supported by it on the website and it worked with some of the faster ones but it just would not work with the Ryzen 5 3600. I did a little bit of research out there and there was a lot of people that had Aorus boards, not just this one, but others very similar, the ATX boards, where they had the same problem too. So of course there is clearly something wrong with the BIOS on these motherboards, even though it is running the latest because I did update it, where it just simply will not run that CPU. So we had to buy another CPU. I didn't want to use anything even older, so I wanted to get something a little bit newer and something that would actually last us a little bit longer. And for that, I picked up this here. This is the AMD Ryzen 5 5600. I've never actually had one of these before. I've had this 5600X and that was actually a pretty decent CPU. And so far, this one's been really good as well, to be honest. It's a six core, 12 thread processor from AMD's AM4 line. And it is probably the latest generation on there, particularly for the Ryzen 5 range. I know that you can get the Ryzen 5 5600X3Ds, or at least you can in some countries, but we can't here. You're kind of stuck with this kind of level stuff. And I thought I would give it a go. And so far, it's been an okay CPU. Of course, that actually worked perfectly fine in this motherboard, just as luck would give it. So we got the system up and running. After we actually worked all that out, of course, we need an NVMe drive as well because we can't reuse the SATA drive. So I thought, why not give everything else an upgrade too? So we reached out to some of our friends at Patriot who have helped provide us with some pretty cool equipment here. For the RAM, they provided us with four sticks of eight gigabytes of their Viper Steel range that's non-RGB, so it keeps with the aesthetics of the machine. And I think it actually looks much better having the four sticks here particularly with the extended motherboard compared to the previous version. And for the NVMe drive, they treated us to a two terabyte Gen 4 NVMe. Now, of course, that won't work at full speeds on this kind of setup, although it actually would do, to be honest, it would work perfectly fine on here, but it gives us plenty more space than the original one terabyte SATA SSD that we had, uh, which means that I don't have to mess around with partitions and things like that, or mounting new drives and stuff like that. So that actually worked out pretty well. So I want to send a big thank you to them for helping get this machine up and running and a much better system overall. It's now running 32 gigabytes of RAM. We've doubled up our SSD storage. So everything is looking good there too. Unfortunately, once we'd actually mounted that into the system, we got it all hooked up. We couldn't then install the radiator that we've got here, the Cooler Master 240 millimeter all-in-one into the top. That's where it originally was. We had to remove the rear fan because it simply would not fit. It kept hitting the motherboard itself. So we had to relocate that then 
to the front and because we have this extra one big fan in the front here which is actually mounted to the front of the case not the paneling behind this one is acting as one of the fans for the cooler and we've installed another arctic fan on the bottom to kind of fill up the radiator and make sure that we get a lot of airflow through unfortunately that does mean that only one fan is working off the motherboard header and changing speeds because this one here is a static fan that just provides air into the system but so far it's actually kept everything nice and cool particularly with that 5600 processor which is only a 65 watt anyway so that's not a big issue but it did mean we have to fit it up the front here and it kind of is a little bit more hidden but that did mean then we can actually get a rear fan in the back so everything now is starting to look good we've got the system together we've got the cooler in not ideal location but it works everything mounts up perfectly fine the system actually runs and the next thing that they decided to just stop working altogether on me was the power supply originally we were using a cooler master mwe 550 watt gold power supply it was a fully modular unit that i bought many years ago that i kind of found in a box and it decided to stop working completely stop working i tried it on multiple systems it just would not provide any power to anything so I don't know why that power supply decided to just give up its life. It must have just been its time and swapping it in and out of systems, probably building the system and that just really showed up some kind of fault with it. So that power supply got chucked away and instead we're using our EVDA 750 watt gold rated power supply. It's still a modular unit so we can cut down on the cables, but it's a much better unit, much higher rated. And also it's got much cleaner cable management. We can actually get separate connections out for our graphics card now. So we don't have all the pigtails that we're getting stuck in the fans and stuff so overall it's a much cleaner build it's just something that we had to do we of course are only keeping the two parts on this whole system well three parts all together we're keeping the cooler we're keeping the case and of course the graphics card as well this is the rx 6600 8 gigabyte and i really do love this graphics card it's super silent it plays all the modern games to a fashion you have to adjust some kind of settings but it is perfect for a linux build because amd just generally works better with Linux. Even if you install Ubuntu on these systems, it will pick up near enough the latest drivers and you're going to get away with playing games perfectly fine. So that, of course, is going to be staying with the system too. Now, the only last things that we need to do on the system is, of course, install the graphics card itself and then get it up and running. So I'm going to install this and then we'll go through what the next pain that I actually had with it was. And then we had the machine. Everything was looking good. The graphics cards installed. Everything is working, particularly off of a test bench. Everything is plugged in. We're all ready to go. We've got fans that have got custom curves and all this kind of stuff. So we decided to start the install of Steam OS. I went and downloaded the latest Steam Deck version on ISO, burnt it to a USB stick just as you normally would, threw it in the machine and absolutely nothing happened. It had the exact same effect as the previous system where it's just some kind of incompatibility with the hardware. There's a lot of people out there that will tell you to install the Steam Deck version and there's a lot of videos out there with people showing you how to do it but unfortunately there is also even more people out there that are getting more issues and commenting on those videos and things because they simply cannot get it to work and the reason for that is because the Steam Deck version of a Steam OS is a very cut down lightweight thing. It's not officially supporting of desktop PCs because they've really cut it down to work on a Steam Deck. Hopefully one day they will actually produce a proper desktop version that we can get again, which they used to do for the version two, but for version three, you just stuck with the Steam Deck version and you have to have some real good luck to be able to get it to work, particularly with the hardware that you've got inside. It doesn't even matter if you follow their instructions of making sure that you've got an AMD based processor and an AMD based graphics card. I've seen people out there, they've got it working on Intel CPUs. I've seen people out there getting it working on Nvidia graphics cards, even though you don't get like the latest drivers and things, but they've managed to have to get it working unfortunately we just cannot with this system so i don't want to actually go through and replace even more stuff because at this point now you might as well not bother with linux at all originally this whole system was supposed to be a cheap throw together of janky stuff that we've got from around the studio run linux on it have a great time gaming show people how you can actually put together some real janky systems and and still game even today without things that are supported by Windows. But of course, this system is now fully supported by Windows 11 as well. So if you are somebody out there that have gone to this kind of level of replacing things, getting things working, and now you've got an even more modern system, stick with Windows because that's going to work even better. Of course, 
We're going to continue to use Linux Ubuntu on this system with Steam OS. I know that a lot of you out there just don't like Ubuntu. You want to use things like Bazite and stuff like that. I'm just very used to Ubuntu, so it makes more sense to me to be able to do things. Maybe I will give Bazite a go or something. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to install Bazite on this and see what kind of performance we get out of games and see how easy it is but instead of being an actual steam os machine at the moment we're going to wait for the official release so instead we're going to make it a steam themed machine so there are a few things that we need to do the case i absolutely love and i think it looks all steamy anyway it's got nice white rgb lighting in it it's a nice blue case it's very small it's going to sit on the side really nice i think we're going to actually install it onto the monitor in the background here and have that actually as a nice little gaming system for the studio it's all built and it all works so we just need to make sure that we get Ubuntu running on there and Steam maybe we'll even get a few other games launchers running on there too and show you guys how to do that as well again let me know in the comments below if you want me to do that but there is one more thing that we need to do to this system to make it really kind of Steam themed and I have to have a big thank you to one of our Discord members here because they sent us something that will actually finish this off perfectly nice and that is this little thing here now this is a steam logoed cap for the all-in-one cooler the cooler that we actually used here was the cooler master 240r that is an all-in-one cooler that has rgb in the cap here but you can always pop off the cover and they give you kind of 3d print files to be able to print your own and one of our great community members actually printed us one with a steam logo so of course we need to get that installed into the system have to make sure that we get it the right way i'm not 100 sure which way it goes around but all you do is you just push it onto the front and squeeze it in and that looks absolutely amazing i would like to actually add some more things into this case at some point that actually have some maybe steam logos get a nice little steam powered kind of sticker on it somewhere i'm not sure sure again let me know in the comments below what you think I can actually do to this. Maybe we'll get some cable extensions, finish it off nicely. But for now, I think that little cut cap there, which is going to shine the light through of the Steam logo, looks absolutely brilliant. And there we have it. This is a little bit of a video to just take you through some of the pains that we had while building our Linux gaming PC. And to be honest, Linux wasn't even the biggest problem. Steam OS was a little bit of a problem, but installing Ubuntu on this machine is absolutely no issue at all. I know it works perfectly fine installing steam on top of that and all the extras that you need like the overlays and stuff like that are very single commanded to be able to get things running using an amd graphics card drivers are beautifully fine on linux particularly on ubuntu i'm pretty sure when you actually install ubuntu you get nearly the latest amd graphics drivers or the Mesa ones for the rx 6600 and it only takes like one command on the terminal to be able to upgrade that to the latest anyway we're now going to get this system installed onto the desk over here and we're going to get some gaming on our nice ultra wide screen you'll probably see that going forward is there any games that you want me to actually test on this system with of course the limitations in the hardware that we've got here i think it's actually a pretty decent spec with the six core 12 thread processor on the ryzen uh well the am4 platforms ryzen 5000 series still pretty decent today loads of people still use them the rx 6600 could probably do with an upgrade at some point but for now it's going to actually get us gaming and playing some pretty decent games particularly on linux anyway so i think that's what we're going to do next with it and we'll probably do some more modifications to the case at some point i really do want to kind of just hack things and get things working my my might actually get some cable um extensions here but i'm not sure what color yet Originally, I was going to look for maybe something in a white, but it doesn't really go with the rest of the theme. And I can't find this this kind of like a baby blue case. I can't really find that blue at the moment with those cable extensions. So maybe I need to have some custom made. But anyway, this is our little Linux gaming PC. It has been a nightmare to build. It's cost us a lot more money than originally was supposed to be intended to, but it's 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 actually a pretty decent system now, so we can get away with that. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content and you want to see where we take our little Linux gaming PC next to see what kind of versions we get on there. Maybe I will try Bazite and we'll do a video on that if you guys want to watch it. And I'm sure as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one.